T. Brown and Morris, Laura Rosenberg, what are you doing? I, was, I almost knocked something over. He's breaking stuff. Laura He's, Styles, who do we have here today? Who this is, is the boy Way. The boy Way from yeah, where? From the group a Titanium. He's he came all the way from Bangkok, Thailand. To Thailand. Hang out with us. Yes. This is the guy we we met you in Japan. Yes, yes we did. He was hanging out with us. Yes, we had yes. a good time. He performed at Summer Jam Tokyo. Why are you acting confused? Where is you, were there, <laughs> you hung out with him multiple nights. That's right. That's right. You remember him very clearly. Yeah, that's right. So, Cass, what what did you want to do? Why are you standing? You, you normally Why? don't come here for interviews. No, no, well, because that's his guy. guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just here. So I'm here, I'm here to, I wasn't supposed to do this interview? No, okay, you, no, no. you let, definitely are. Laura right, said that so you weren't supposed to do let it. Let me explain but, how this happened, okay? Right. Because me and Cass, when we're doing our little videos called International Vibes, where we're interviewing international artists. Okay. You know yes. what I mean? So we so then, you know, because I want Cass to come in and, and get some little shine. Because you guys had what AK came by, right? AK, I've done one with AK69. AK yeah. Co, Co, which he Co, brought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our boy Flizzle from Malaysia. Of course, yeah. well, by the way, uh, Way is actually their boy, but everything else is just a hustle for them to get gigs overseas. Let's just be clear. What I mean, a liar! They're just, no, they're, they're hustling. Just, they're they're hustling lies. the world. Yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. The world. Hold on. Just know. There's lies. That's Those hate. are lies. That's, lies. That's, that's cast hate. one been That's overseas. Hate. That's yes, forever, thank forever. you. Facts. I've been overseas. Okay, how about this? Cass, let me fix it. And... Tell me, fix this, Cass. What? You're, it's true. You're being legitimate. It's just people you know and who you've worked with before, and you want to expose people. Yeah. Laura is hanging on to your coattails <laughs> and just wants to go on vacation. With you. That is not true. That is a lie. That is right. a lie. Time out. Time yeah. out. Way. Yes, sir. You guys bring Laura Styles to Thailand. She went to Thailand and did some parties. Uh, yeah. Last time. He had to um, think about it. He was like, you know, because, because it wasn't with there. him. It, was it wasn't with him. Yeah. Who was it with? Damn, you racist. With Buddha and Ono, my heavy hitter brothers. Buddha, Thank you very how much. What parties did she actually do? Two. He said one almost. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like one and a half. One and a half. One Fuck all of y'all. She was, on, she was on vacation by the pool. Wait, so I, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm, she, this you, is the no, Cass no, no, no. Laura no, no, International no, no. Okay, You can be. You, of I'm course. Stay, stay calm. Stay. No, you can stay. Actually. There's you, no room. All right, so Cass, yeah, room. yeah, let's do a little switch. Yeah, got rid of Rosenberg, you can sit on my lap. Let Rosenberg go. Cass, what do you see? All right, so wait, am I involved in the international vibes? Yes, yes, yes. I'm really not going to say that. I'm really just going to stay here. You better not if we kick that Rosenberg. You got to do an interview now. Yes. The boy oh, Way's here. Now, here's the interesting thing I learned about Way. God. Um, Way, you're actually from? From here. Where? Oh, from New York. From, from New York area. I was born in Patterson and lived in uh, Brooklyn, Queens. So I'm like a New Yorker, half New Yorker, half Bangkok. And so when did you decide to move to Thailand and To be and based why? out there permanently? Uh, I mean, from for like since 2009. But I've been going back and forth since 97. Now, are you Thai by nationality? Yeah, I'm full Thai. Full Thai. And so going there was just family, and then you just started bubbling out there. I got sent back when I was like 17. For being there. a badass? Yeah. <laughs> For being a happens. badass. And um, my parents were there at the time, and I spent um, my first trip like two years there mm. and got into the entertainment business. I didn't really speak Thai at that, at that time, but I understood it. So I stayed there for like two and a half years, dabbled into like acting and, and, and music, and then I... Then I thought it wasn't for me because I didn't speak Thai. So I came back here, got my GED, took some acting classes. And and in the meantime, I was doing my music. So um, Titanium formed here. My boy Khan, Dave was already out here. Oh, I get it now. Thai. Titanium. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, clap it up. For me. You get it. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, so you're like real shit. You're like a pop star in Thailand, though. Like in Thailand, you're like the face of rap, hip hop, and the whole shit. You own barbershops. Like it's a whole thing for you. But yeah. one thing that, Ebro, they introduced hip hop to Thailand. Yeah, how did that even happen? Like, so you gotta understand, like Thailand, um, when I first went in like 96, there was, there was no hip hop. They didn't know what hip hop was. So I was like this alien that just stepped off the plane. Everybody was looking at me like, he got big ass pants on, he got Tim's on, he got fatigues on, <laughs> looking all crazy. And um, so when I went to Bangkok, there was probably like maybe like a handful, like maybe like 20 kids that that listened to hip hop. And you would know that they was westernized. You know, they they lived in America or they, they went to school there or something. And they got sent back for whatever reason. So, you know, during that time we would like go to the club and can you play this one song just to hear this one song? And then, you know, turn up to that one song. What was that one song at I that time? I think at that time it was Noriega's What What. <laughs> Super Thug. <laughs> Super Thug. Yeah, 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 Easy to understand. So, um, so from like, I stayed there from like 97 to about 99. Mm -hmm. 
And then I, I was like, okay, I was done with Tyler. And came back and got my GED. And, um, but in the meantime, I was, I was focused on my acting because I fell in love with acting over there. Um, but in the meantime, I was also doing my music too, which my boy Khan and Day were here. And every weekend, like my boy Khan, he worked at a, at a studio over in Jamaica, Queens. He was the engineer during the day. And then at night, when we're done with work, around like midnight, from midnight to six, we'd be in the studio, just stealing studio time, just recording. Mm. So we came out with our first project, which was like a five-song EP. And we went back to Thailand during that New Year's, I think uh, 2000. And we threw a party. So from 96 to 99, there was no hip-hop. 2000, there was, there was like there was a couple hundred people at this party. So we're like, okay, we had 20 copies of the EP. We started giving them out to the friends and, and, and people that we knew. A day later, they were like, yo, where can we buy it? Fans were coming out. I checked out their show the other night. When can we buy the CD? So we started yeah. pressing up CDs. A thousand first. Sold a thousand. Next, five thousand. Ten thousand. And then we came back to America and we were like, yo, there's a market in Thailand now. Let's start up a dot com so we could like talk to our fans from over here, see what they want to hear, what songs they like, yada, yada, yada. And then... Yeah, we just formed Titanium from then. We was like, yo, we got to go back every, whatever, drop a project, go back, promote it. So we were doing that for um, 2000 to 2006. We dropped two albums, uh, like 12 mixtapes. We scored a movie. We did a soundtrack. And um, It's crazy. And that time, at that time, we were just uh, making money to cover costs for like flights and paying the rent here. And in 2006, um, we dropped an album called Thailand's Most Wanted. It was our third album, and it just took off. Three, sh- <laughs> three like sh- when you say took off, like three shows a day, three shows a day, sponsor, corporate, everything. We were doing commercials in France. We were like, you know, we were, yeah, we were, it was it. It was it. How, so, how many copies of the album sold? Do you know? I mean, at that time, it was probably like a hundred thousand of that, but we were independent. Oh wow! You so know, that's we incredible. And like, you know, at that time, like the, the music industry in Thailand, it was like if you were signed to a major, you got like the equivalent to like three bot. Three bot, I mean, not the equivalent, but like three bot, which is like the equivalent to like five cents. And just imagine you got five split. cents on each each CD. Yeah, each CD. And imagine if you had to split that between whoever. Yeah. So it was unheard of when we went and we sold it out the trunk and we were making like two, three dollars. You know, so and super crazy. tight. So at this point, when and it's the boy way, you're the artist, and Titanium's the movement. No, Titanium's the group. It's, it's the group. It's Khan, myself, and Day. Got it. You know, we've been together for 16 years, but um, as of now, like everybody has their own like projects. We still together. We still dropping an album at the end of the year, but everybody's following their own dreams that they want to do. Right. So I want to do an English album. So. And that's what we got to, because you showed me a video. I think you shot the video here in yeah. New York City yeah. now. Yeah. And I want to play the record for people. Um, I'm sure this won't be the last time you performed at Summer Jam in Tokyo. So yeah. we've already started talking about how we're going to crack Thailand and mm. Korea. And, yeah. You know what I mean? And really start getting out there and um, giving the, getting the experience to the people and putting the Hot 97 brand and yeah, hip-hop man. and all that shit international. Yeah, I got to thank Hot 97 for that, too. You know, it's a good look for me. Like, you know, just growing up, being from here, listening to Hot 97, being able to bless that stage in, in Tokyo. Was yeah, that's no, a big deal. When, um, Ibro, when Cast One first put me on, I was like, yo, my dream, I really want to go to Thailand. <coughs> so when I first went over there and experienced the movement, he was like, yo, he, fam. Where'd he, where'd he go there? He's like, you don't understand. He was describing it to me, but I'm like, he's probably exaggerating. Right, so give like, us an whatever. example. Give for us example, example, right? When I first went, I went, to, I went to Thailand for the first time on my own. I didn't know these guys. I didn't know anybody. So I was there and I was like, all right. I was in Bangkok and it was... Crazy, like I was like, I never want to come here crazy, again. Like, crazy in a bad way, oh, like, okay. you know, because it's like not in a bad way. Whereas, because when I go somewhere, I go like, I don't do tours. I just go to experience everything, everyday life as it is. So if you go to Bangkok, if you've never been to Bangkok before, it's like jumping into the fire. The fire was hot. I was like, yo, I'm, I'm never coming <laughs> back. Here you again. mean the chaos of the scene? Yeah, the chaos of the scene of the city. But I didn't know this was going on. So then the next year, somebody called me. It was like, yo, we want to book you to go DJ in Thailand. And I was like, hell no. Like, they want to, we were going to book you to DJ or Backhack. I was like, hell no. Nah. It took like three months of convincing. This was like around 2009. So finally, I was like, all right, fine. Let's just go over. Because I was going to Japan. I was like, all right, fine. We'll make a trip over to Bangkok. And when I got there and I saw what was happening, I was like, yo, 
how do we not know about this? Like these dudes, these dudes are on billboards everywhere, like, and and it's moving. Like they walk down the street, Ty, I mean, um, um, the whole group, Titanium, DJ Buddha, whatever, everybody knows them. People are stopping them in the street, like, yo, let me take a picture. And I'm like, this is kind of lit out here, right? But then it got even bigger when we go to the parties, we go to the clubs, and the clubs are playing 90% hip hop, like, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. which is unheard of to me to see an Asian. Cause even if you go to Japan, you go anywhere, in Tokyo, you gotta mix it up. You gotta play hip hop, you gotta play a little bit, this, little bit of that. They were playing like 90% straight up hard. And I'm like, wow, this is this is crazy. So then when I came back and I'm telling people, they're looking at me like, like I don't know what I'm talking about. They look at me like I'm crazy. Like, yeah, right, you're exaggerating. I'm like, no, I'm not exaggerating. Like, these guys are stars. Like, we, when they have, we haven't gotten to his wife yet. His wife is a star. Their kids are stars. Like, their mm -hmm. friends are stars. Everybody's big. And I'm telling Laura, I'm like, Laura, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook you up. You got to go to Thailand. She's like, ah, I, I was like, know. I want to go. But I was like, okay, okay, I'm ready to go, right? So, Ebro, I go over there. It's like, you know, everything that Cass told me was it. They run everything. Everything they said, that's it. But I, my, I think the highlight of my trip was when I went with them to a festival like other version of Coachella. And I, I see people performing. But when I see these guys get on, Ebro, the energy was like if Jay came out. It was like, rrr, it, it ripped. Mm -hmm. They shut the festival down. And, and it's it's crazy. And then my favorite part of the story, too, of Way is that, because I'm looking at him up, I'm like, let me look up these guys. And I look up his wife, right? And I'm like, <laughs> why does his wife have like millions of followers? I don't get it. You know, so I'm looking at it. Then he tells me, he's like, he tells me, he's like, oh, his, you know, his wife was like an ex, like race car driver. And I'm like, what? Uh -huh. Turned like radio personality, turned like she has like a super famous like morning show over there on TV. And then she's like Kelly Ripper or something like I, that. Kelly Ripper never drove no cars, I don't Fact, think. Never <laughs> race car driver, Racing. <laughs> you get my point. Yeah. yeah. And then in their in their own, in their own right, Titanium, they literally they literally brought hip hop. So imagine, Ebro, you're from a country that's not from here. You literally yeah. go over there and are the face of hip hop. You literally, like when people say rap, they think you. Yeah. That's what it's like in Bangkok and Thailand. It's like. And so when you get outside, I mean, obviously we know we've heard of Bangkok. We've mm -hmm. heard, I've heard of obviously Phuket and not the club uptown. Okay. Um, <laughs> doesn't exist anymore though. We say what? It's over. It doesn't, it doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> um, but um, outside of that, like, is hip hop just big in the big city or has it now? Because even here in America, right? Like, we talk about hip hop like it's an everyday thing, and it is to a, a certain level of hip hop fans, mm -hmm. right? But you can go to parts of America where hip hop's not the biggest music. Yeah, it's not. It's not the biggest um, music in all of Thailand because Thailand is a rock oriented country. Got it. But uh, in the in the major cities, yeah, hip hop so in, the a, clubs, a, in the clubs, in the clubs for in sure. the clubs, in the clubs for sure. Um, there was a time like when two thousand and six. That was when hip hop, I think, in Thailand like peaked. Like it was so big, like everything, the commercials, everything. We were like on every billboard, um, you know, and hip hop was playing everywhere. And then like it became like the kids. One thing is it became a fashion. It became like, mm. you know, kids were doing it or liked it, wanted to rap. It became they wanted to be hip hop. But then like over the years from like from hitting the peak from like 2006 to like 2009, like it shifted like. It got filtered out, like, mm. through, and then now, like after two thousand nine, like the real the people who are really doing it are still doing it now, and like the the movement in, in Thailand is real crazy. It's real talented. Like there's a, a lot, a lot of, lot of MCs, break dancing, yeah. fashion is probably woven in there. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing. So it, it's 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 a growing scene. So it, like hip hop is in its like probably like sixteen, seventeen years old now. Yeah, you know there. That's and that's a great place mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. He has records with Snoop. Yeah, with Nipsey. And and now on your next project coming out on your solo project, uh -huh. uh, when does that drop? Hopefully by the end of the year too. And who are we expecting to see uh, the boy way featured with on that project? Or who would you? Who have you gotten in the bag that you could tell us about? And what are you working on? I'm working on you know um, getting some features on it. But um, right now, like I'm really like I want people to like hear the music and like you know form it like organically, organically like yo. If they feel the vibe, and then they, and then we talk, you know, the business afterwards. But you know, that's you don't all. want it forced. Just yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I, I just want, I want to make good music, and I don't want to force music because you can. That's not good when you start forcing. And music. it's not like you thirsty for paper or recognition yeah. at this point because you're. I just want to make music and good music, yeah. and just continue to do what I do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the move, the group is Titanium, the boy away from the group Titanium, Thailand. Uh, if you know about it, uh, much love. If you don't know about it, 
Let's play this record for the people, the first single. Is this the first single off the upcoming project? Is that the, how yeah. we moving this? Yes, sir. So tell the people what it is. Intro it, man. Yeah, Let's the go. boy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the first single off the off the new album. Yeah, but you got to do... You speak Thai now? I speak Thai. You got to do it in Thai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing got to be real. Like, I need to feel the... You know what I mean? So what it got... The boy way is like one Thai Tanium. I have a new single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the title of this that you guys are doing? What is it called? International Vibes. International Vibes. International Vibes. Vibes. Yeah. Vibing. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm still the number one go-kart driver. Oh, yeah, yeah. In, yeah, in yeah. all of Thailand. Oh, God. You, I just say that. Wait, you beat his wife? <laughs> oh, I be, oh, no, his wife don't want it yet. But next time I go, we're going to get it popping. But these guys, I schooled all of them. <laughs> we let them win. <laughs>